The Roman Empire was the greatest state of the past. Its territory included not only possessions around the Mediterranean in Europe, but also in North Africa and Western Asia. To defend such huge lands, a powerful mobile army was needed. For this purpose, wherever legions and trade caravans needed to pass, Roman roads were laid to facilitate their fast movement. Rome needed a large number of quality roads to strengthen its power over vast territories. Later, despite the fall of the Roman Empire, its legacy persisted and roads continued to be used for about a millennium, and some roads survive to this day. One of the main functions of the roads was to ensure the passage of messengers who regularly delivered mail. Merchants quickly appreciated all the benefits of the emergence of such highways. Since at that time, mainly maritime routes were used for trade, after the construction of roads, Roman merchants quickly switched to simpler transportation of goods over land. Ordinary Roman citizens also began to use the roads. Roman roads were designed for movement on foot, horseback, carriages, and chariots. They also transported cargo on wagons drawn by oxen. By law, the minimum width of the road was about 2 meters and 30 centimeters. But in reality, this width reached up to 7 meters. Thanks to this, two carriages going towards each other could easily pass on the road. By the time of the late empire, 113 Roman provinces already had at least 370 major roads with a total length of 400,000 kilometers. Only the territory of the island of Great Britain, the farthest province of Rome, had about 4,000 kilometers of roads. The Romans partially adopted road construction techniques from representatives of an earlier culture, the Carthaginians and Etruscans. The very first Roman roads appeared around 500 BC and were flattened and compacted strips of land connecting settlements. The Romans came up with several formulas for successful road construction. The exceptional quality of their roads was a result of government control over their construction. The Twelve Tables Laws, adopted in the 5th century BC, established a standard width for roads, and people living nearby had to fence off their plots of land. The roads were built as straight as possible, so that repairs would be cheaper later on. The Romans did not build roads to last forever. They still required occasional repairs, which were costly for the treasury. Repairing a straight road that was also as short as possible was much cheaper and easier. Road construction in Rome also differed in that they used local materials found near open quarries. Gravel, crushed stone, sand, basically anything nearby. Various craftsmen were involved in road construction. At the initial stage, a land surveyor worked, who had to calculate, measure, and lay out markers along the entire route. To make their work easier, surveyors used special tools such as long rulers, triangular dioptras for determining height and leveling, and similar instruments. Then, an engineer drew up a road project, taking into account all the features of the area, and only then did builders start work consisting of soldiers or slaves, as well as nearby settlers and captives. The road was usually built simultaneously on separate sections of different qualities, distant from each other. First, they prepared the site for the future road. They dug a small depression on a level terrain, and on a hilly one, they raised the level of the road, digging small ditches on both sides of the road, and in those places where the soil usually settled. They equipped the road with supports. Roads that crossed rough terrain were built with reduced slope. This ensured convenience and safety for travelers. The track widened at turns so that meeting carts could pass each other without any problems. The technology of constructing the road surface was creating a layered pie. To level and compact the lower layer of soil, they used large unprocessed stones about the size of a palm or boulders which served as the foundation for the future road. The thickness of the first layer reached half a meter. The next layer consisted of a mixture of crushed stone and formwork made of gravel, or a layer of sand and gravel, which were already fixed with a binding solution. Then came a layer of crushed bricks and small gravel. The top layer was a mixture of fine sand, 
gravel, lime, or soil, which was both soft and durable. Roman shovels did not have a cutting edge, and the tool itself was entirely made of wood. The shovel was only used to clear the ground and load it into carts, while the soil was already loosened with mattocks. The road surface was slightly curved, allowing rainwater to flow into drainage ditches dug along the road. Sidewalks were made along the edges of the road, and border stones were laid. As troops mainly traveled along the roads, another path was often built parallel to the main one for horse riders and pedestrians. Roman roads were rarely bridged. In cities, they were bridged to make the road flat. For this purpose, massive stones were laid on top of all the layers. The exception was the very first one, the Appian Way. It was named after the statesman and military commander Appius Claudius Caecus, who built it in 312 BCE. It was paved along the entire length of Via Appia. From the very beginning, poets called it the Queen of Roads. It was the first high-speed pedestrian road built to connect Rome with the distant territories of the Apennine Peninsula. It was built so well that even modern people note how perfectly all the stones were fitted together. By the beginning of the new era, the Roman Empire was already permeated with a network of roads. About 30 major highways branched off from Rome. The distance along the roads of the empire was measured from the Golden Milestone, which was installed in the Forum in the center of the city. Every 25, 30 kilometers along the roads, there were places for travelers to rest and feed their animals. It was also common to bury the dead along major roads, as the law prohibited burials within city limits. In the fourth century ad, the Romans built a road network spanning 53,000 miles. It played a crucial role in the history of Rome. With each conquered city, the Romans added it to their empire, connecting it to Rome and creating a strong supply network between colonies and the center. All of this gave rise to the saying, all roads lead to Rome. The Romans did everything in their power to protect and maintain their roads. But these same roads also played a significant role in the fall of Rome. Convenient routes, bridges, and tunnels, as well as structures on piles crossing swamps, all made it easier for barbarians to advance through the empire. When the Roman Empire fell, road construction ceased. On the barbarian lands of the early Middle Ages, almost all of the Roman engineers' constructions were abandoned and soon forgotten. Remnants of Roman roads still exist throughout Italy and beyond, as well as in the cities buried under the ashes of Vesuvius, Herculaneum, and Pompeii. Many modern highways also stretch over ancient roads. The oldest automobile roads have existed for much less time than the Roman roads which were in use for centuries.